So David Knight, he asked, what are the areas that Oregon needs to bolster? As of right now, it seems to be the point of the interior defensive line is really huge. The interior defensive line has shown some issues in the past few years. Whenever Jordan Scott isn't available, we seem to have nothing there. Uh, we're really deep at wide receiver and quarterback, so that's fine there. I think outside of that, the main positions we really need to solidify and strengthen the depth of is going to be the defensive backs. You've seen once we had guys opt out and you know this all this stuff happened, we didn't have that depth. We had uh, that Boise State transfer play at safety, and he's a solid player. He's always in the right spots. He's just not a power five athlete. He can't keep up with the speed of the power five players. And it's just we didn't have that depth to be prepared for something like this. We didn't have the depth to be prepared for an injury even. if Say it wasn't COVID. Say it was an injury instead. We didn't have the depth to, to work past that, and we really need to get to that point. We're getting towards being a top 10, 247 talent composite roster. And if we're going to be up there, there's no reason that we can't do that next man up mentality. Mike, you talked a couple minutes ago about um, where Oregon tends to gravitate, uh, depending on whether you're talking about the West Coast or we're talking about coming back east to Georgia, Michigan, a few other places. Um, what is the recent connection? You 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 gave me a few nuggets on this offline uh, when we were not recording last week, but with the Alabama connection becoming a place where Oregon's pulled out some players recently. Yeah, so – as we mentioned, interior defensive line, Jason Jones, really big, solid athlete, came out of Alabama. The quarterback, Tanner Bailey, coming out of Alabama. It seems that like any guy who's a real fringe blue chip, like elite prospect, he may not be a take at Alabama, but he'd be a take at like, you know, Auburn or the like all the other schools around there. And it seems we're gonna try and steal those guys without having to waste the resources going that recruiting them the whole year it seemed like with tanner bailey it seemed we were recruiting malik murphy and we were recruiting aj duffy but when it seemed that it was an easy take we went in there grabbed him and got a solid player there's a lot of players out east who i hate to say it but these guys could come out west and dominate high school like i've played football in oregon a youth for oregon and this next year played in florida and it's completely different it's a whole different game so what what it is is we're starting to land anywhere that Mario's been before. You see Southern Florida. We're starting to go after guys there. We're going after Alabama. And there's been a lot of offers in Tennessee and Georgia as well. So I think he's just trying to get our our recruiting brand, per se, into the southeast. It's cut to the point where a lot of people know Oregon. They've watched Oregon as kids. And some of them, maybe it's the uniforms, maybe it's the shoes or whatever even grew up Oregon fans living all the way out here. I've met people in Florida who have never left the state who are Oregon fans. And it's, that brand is becoming a reach, and you just finally need to start taking advantage of it. Absolutely. It, it's a brand that's uh, unique to itself and really became the first one to create the uniform craze. Because before that, it was just uh, teams had their home and road uniforms, and Oregon made that a whole cult following <laughs> uniforms what are they going to wear this week isn't this crazy isn't this cool and a big argument over whether it looks great looks putrid looks just all good uh and bad publicity is good publicity and that's what oregon turned that into uh maryland did it to a certain extent but if you're not winning then nobody cares <laughs> so with maryland doing it it didn't really matter because you got to follow that with winning and when Chip Kelly goes 46 and seven and they show up at two national championship games in the span of four years, then that uh, people get their attention. Notice. Absolutely. They take notice. I think exactly. one of the huge things for the brand was uh, DeAnthony Thomas committing to Oregon. He was not expected to come to Oregon at all when he was going up to commit. Hey, everyone's like, okay, LA, he's going to USC. He's going to be a Trojan. And uh, from what I've seen down here, Everyone who I know who plays youth football in Florida, played in high school in Florida, everyone knows who DeAnthony Thomas is. Everyone watched his and Tavon Austin's highlight tape and Percy Harvin's highlight tape. And I think he was honestly just as big for the branding as the uniforms, which I know says a lot. But his play style is easy to watch, and there's a lot of speedsters in places like Florida and California. And DeAnthony Thomas being the kid everybody remembers, or one of the three guys everybody remembers with Tavon and Percy, it's going to help you some with the guys who have that kind of play style. It's like, oh, I can be that. You know, it's Seven McGee coming to Oregon. 
he could be that. Like that's what his comparison is. Everyone talks about Seven McGee and DeAnthony Thomas. Mike, I love the term you threw out there, play style, because that's exactly what it is. So there are fast guys all over the place. But DeAnthony Thomas is a guy Elusive. like a Dexter McCluster, like yeah, a I like that. shoot. Who am I thinking of with uh, Oklahoma State now with the Kansas City Chiefs? Oh, um, oh my goodness, my mind just went blank. Oh my goodness, one of the better players in the NFL, Oklahoma State, Kansas City Chiefs. Running back, right? Yes. Oh my goodness. But anyway, Percy wow. Harvin, there's another example. Percy Harvin. Those, those kind of guys that um, just just play ridiculous in space can go from zero to 100 in a blink of an eye. Yeah, there are tons of athletes on the field, and you win the games with quarterbacks and offensive and defensive line play. But in terms of, you know, these guys are game changers as well and determine the outcome as well. But when you can fit the brand and it's got a perfect uh, synergy with what you're putting on the field. So the flashy the, play style, the, and the flashy, exactly. Universe. It just uh, became a hot commodity there that really worked for Oregon. Unlike anybody else. And I can't believe that I can't, uh, the stars align. Tyreek, Tyreek Tyree Hill. Hill, Tyreek Hill. Oh Tyreek Hill goodness. was drafted. Tyreek yes. Hill was drafted to the chiefs because the Anthony Thomas could not stay healthy. And Tyreek Hill is what the Anthony Thomas was supposed to be. Tyreek was drafted originally was returning kicks because they had DeAnthony Thomas. Now then they took DeAnthony Thomas was returning kicks so they could keep Tyreek healthy. And everything that DeAnthony was supposed to be for the Chiefs is what Tyreek Hill became. Tyreek Hill was able to, you know, stay healthy. He was able to stay on the field. DeAnthony showed them flashes with Kansas City, but he just couldn't stay on the field. So I didn't cheat there because I wanted to come up with that name myself because I was embarrassed that I couldn't, but I knew that there would be people shouting at us. And thank you, Jordan, for doing just that in the <laughs> chat saying Tyreek Hill, <laughs> of course. I don't know uh, why we both blanked on that. Yeah, we both blanked on it. That's crazy. 